and then bring your child back in for, for the service. If you can do that, uh, you, you're wondering why are we doing that? Well, it's simple. We, we try to keep the sanctuary or the church clean. So if you can do that, we really appreciate it. The Adventure Club is starting again this month. Please see uh, Sister Melissa Jones for more information and to order uniforms. If you have a young one that is adventurous age group and you would like your, your young one to join the Adventurous Club, please make sure that you get that taken care of. Register your child in order for the uniforms to be ordered. A brief meeting for the church choir members right after the worship service, so don't hurry up and go home, choir members. We would like to meet with you uh, to, to plan this year's choir and our activities for this year. Transfer of membership. I think we already done the second reading of this, but let me do it again, just in case you missed last Saturday. Transfer of membership. This is second reading and vote. Brother Hamilton and Sister Elsie Martinez transfer from Dayton Central Spanish to Emmanuel Saturday Adventist Church in San Antonio. This is the second reading. I now would like to entertain a motion uh, to approve this reading. Move second. Everyone that accepts, say amen. amen. And the same for not accepting it. Thank you much, Ms. Kerry. Brother Martinez, welcome back. Welcome back home. And express that to your wife as well. Thank you for coming back. Thank you to all who donated to the community giving away. Uh, Sister Carmen already alluded to that in her presentation. Thank you, Alvin, Sharon, Felicia, Carlos, and Keith for uh, tolerating the frigid, that's what he says right here, frigid temperature. So it must have been very cold out here. But my wife and I were out of town, so that's why we were not here. So we can be excused, right, Carmen? <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't be here to help out. So thank you uh, from, from myself. Thank you so much for taking the time to take care of that community outreach. New Year service tonight, this is very important. This is not for just few people, this is for our whole church. You can make the time to come and fellowship with us this evening. This is the uh, New Year service tonight at 4.45 and followed by the New Year's Eve dinner, and that dinner will be a take-out dinner. We're not going to sit down and fellowship with you in a fellowship room. This is going to be a take-out dinner. It will be prepared for you in a, in a, in a fellowship uh, hall, and as you, as you leave, kindly stop by the kitchen or the fellowship room and pick up your container and take it home with you. We have prepared a delicious a uh, meal for you, both uh, meat and vegetarian plates will be available. So you, you need not to worry about that. Department leaders, please give Elder Jones or Ramonita your events for the church calendar for this year. If, if you haven't done so, uh, department leaders, please make sure you, you, you give those uh, folks that are responsible for our calendar for this year, your items for the calendar. Birthdays today, and that, and that is for Justin Furaha and Kasue Abuchimana. You see, all right. And also Kashene Imatke, all right. Did I pronounce it correctly? No? All right, here we go again. <laughs> well, you know it's your birthday, right? All right. Um, and on the third, Dolores Abunis, 
Then on the fifth, Acton Apulis. Those are the birthdays we have for this month. But let me let you know something. Last month, last Saturday, we didn't have birthday uh, uh, announcements uh, because we didn't have any bulletin last month. But you missed my birthday. My birthday was on the 27th of December. That was last Monday. Well, thank you. Somebody else had a birthday after me. Okay, Carlos and Nancy. Yeah, see, we miss all those birthdays. But it's okay. You want to know how old your your truly is? Seven. Forty? Oh, you are so kind. Hey, twenty-five. Thank you, brother. Twenty-five. I'm seven old years old. Praise God. Standing here, really, really praising God for all the years that He has given me to live life. So happy birthday to all of you for the month of January. We, I'm sure, we have some more, but that one is to come later. Uh, there's no other announcement, but I, I, I would like to re-emphasize the choir members. Very important for us to talk to you and make plans for the coming year. Thank you.
So if you can please remember them in your prayers. Lord is an evangelist over there. He came here uh, a few years ago and he gave a sermon. And he was blessed to have been picked up by the Hope Channel, who flew him all throughout the country, uh, witnessing and as well as they were working on raising money for some of their churches. And in the future, I'll be presenting some of those pictures for the orphanages that they've been uh, able to erect in the last couple of years. And Eddie says he's been applying for more jobs. Please pray that God will uh, provide him a job that will allow him to keep his habit. When we take a stand for the Lord, he doesn't say it will be easy. Jesus suffered many things while he was here on earth. And people who stood up for him, his disciples and others, who took a stand for the Lord and for worshiping on the Sabbath day, took a stand for the Lord. They did not go through it without suffering. But we know that when we pray to God and we put our trust and faith in God, He may not come through in advance, but He does come through for us in one way or another. So I think your prayer will be answered. And I do pray again for uh, God coming through the very last day of my job. It was supposed to be my last, but God said, no, it's not. So my job was extended to June of this year, so I'm so thankful and I praise the Lord for that. And even if it wasn't, I'm still praising God that even if it wasn't extended, that's okay because he's got another plan. So Eddie Amen. has another plan for you. Amen. So we're just going to keep you in our prayers. And, um, yes, um, Diane, you had a plan. Yes, I pray for Taylor for you. Yes. He's sick. Yes, we will be keeping Taylor as well as Elaine and her son Kobe and her husband and any other family members who are not here with us today. We'll keep them in our prayers. And we want to uh, praise the Lord for the online viewers at this time that we will also be praying for your well-being and for whatever reason you're not able to be here. Thank you for joining us online. So are there those who have silent prayer with us? Yes. yes, that's right. Um, Anthony Jones. Um, was not feeling that great this morning, so we want to keep him and Melissa and his boys in prayer as well as anyone else that um, maybe they might have been led to what have you may not be feeling well. So at this time, we would ask that you kneel, and those who can't kneel to be silent and make a motion, we'll have a prayer to you.
We praise you, Lord, that our church members are here. We praise you for those who are home and can't be here for whatever the reason is. We have a number of people who are sick in our congregation, as well as family members. We pray for Hannah and for the family around her. We pray for Taylor, Riley, Elaine, and Kobe, and Kobe's father. We pray for Anthony Jones, Melissa Jones, that he is, and anyone else who may be not feeling well at this time. We ask that you just touch them and feel them. You made us together, put us together intricately. You know how our bodies work. You know what we need. Please provide everything we need for our bodies to continue throughout the year, Lord, to be healthy, to heal from the COVID, Lord, from other diseases and illnesses. Some things are by our choices. Some things are not by our choices, Lord. But we just ask that you cover us with your wings that you fill us with the Holy Spirit, who can work inside of us. Give us wisdom and knowledge to know what it is that we need to do. Give us the right things to put in our bodies, to keep us healthy, so that we may continue serving you throughout this year. Help us to always remember to bring others to you is what this is all about. To not be selfish with our knowledge, to not be selfish with what you bless us with, Lord. To remember to share with others there are those who will always be with us, who will be in need. Help us to always know how to provide for them. The physical, emotional, spiritual support that they need. We ask that you fill each and every one here today with the Holy Spirit. That we can all walk out of here today knowing that we've come to worship an awesome and mighty God. And it doesn't matter what our needs are. Whether it's we need a job such as Eddie. Whether it's that we need healing such as the people mentioned already. Lord, touch us. Open the doors for us to walk through for the jobs we need. Heal us from the inside out. Help us to remember always to share the goodness of your salvation and that you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. He died so that we may live and live more abundantly. Help us to remember to walk down your path of righteousness, Lord, that leads to the heavenly kingdom. We know that you're coming as soon, Lord. We ask that you be with us the hour of this Friday as we bring the message. We ask that you fill him with the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Ghost speak out from him to us with the words that you want us to hear today. We pray, Lord, that you be with Leo as she plays the organ, that she just plays the beautiful music that will worship you and help us to praise and bring glory to your name. We place all our petitions before you, all the unspoken requests for it. For those who are traveling, we ask for traveling mercies and for the well-being. We ask that you bring us all back to church again next Saturday. And in the meantime, help us in this coming week to put you first each and every morning as we start our day. And help us to be a witness to somebody each and every day to bring one person you. Even if we think that our efforts don't matter, help us to remember that it's not our doing that can bring them, that it's the work of the Holy Spirit through us to bring others. Help us to continue being light and salt to the community surrounding our church, surrounding our homes, with our friends, with our co workers. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
where he breathes. First is where he belongs. Genesis 1, verse 1, the scripture 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We worship God because first, he is where he belongs. The opening words of the Holy Scriptures, in the beginning, God positions God as the first without other details about his origin and by existence. His position as the first is more than honorific or a static title. It declares the divine beginning as the rightful starter of everything. In Paul's words, he is the chief cornerstone, and for John the Revelator, he is the outlook, as the appeal put God's first resounds in our ears. It would be presumptuous to think that we can decide whether God is first. Putting God first is simply acknowledgement of who God is. The first, the starter. When we put God first, we are aligning our existence with the order of the universe. The story is told of two brothers who were busy assembling the pieces of a puzzle. After some time, the father could hear conflict between the brothers. As he stepped into the room, he could see both of them holding on to and pulling the same piece of the puzzle. Wow. Screaming at each other, one wanted to place the piece at the bottom left and the other at the top right. He could not refrain from smiling and finally gave these words of advice. Unless the piece is placed where it should be, you will never complete the puzzle. Unless the first, the starter, is placed where he is supposed to be, our existence will never be complete. We are doomed to be non-starters. In managing our resources, small and great, who and what is competing for the first place? If you aspire to make this year a masterpiece of your life, choose to acknowledge God as the first in everything. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will give you step forward to collect the offer.
and all their friends, like they all his friends are thinking, wow, I want that basketball in the bowl. It's in the set. I want it too. I can imagine them like one of those basketball players just slamming that big button. So he runs home, he goes up to his dad, he says, Dad, yeah, can I have a super summer? Can I? He's like, what's a super summer? It's this big, powerful basketball hoop that doesn't break any sign. Can I have one? Dad says, I'm sorry, all the money is stolen. But if you want it that bad, you're going to have to save up your money by working. Mm -hmm. So Daniel says, OK, I can do that. So he did everything. He started doing jobs for certain of his family friends, as well as others, sweeping up yards, cutting grass, even selling some of his old toys and games and cards. And he was making money, but he was growing really obsessed with, with that goal, that basketball goal. He even slept in his bed with a basketball in his hand. And his parents were going concerned. He says, You're worried about Daniel. He's thinking about that basketball. He was too much. He says, No, wait, wait. Give him some time. He just needs some time to get this through. And he was going, one day he was walking up to his dad saying, Feeling all low sad. And he says, why the low face, son? He says, one of my pals just got that super, not a super slammer. He and his parents are setting up right now. And he says, you should be happy for him. And you've been saving up too. He says, yes, I have, but that's going to take forever to save up to buy that basketball hoop. He says, can we just buy it now? He says, I told you, you just have the money. He says, like, just sit with it. You want it to that bad. He says, sure. Well, he was one day at the school uh, recess playground, and the boys happened to notice that the basketball goal that they had earlier was broken and it was missing the hoop. And Dylan was asking, what happened to a, the basketball hoop here? And he says, some high schoolers came by here and they slammed and broke it. And Daniel said, that's too bad. They should have gotten it should, this school should get a super slammer like the one I'm getting. Well, one day he was sitting with his family and they were having Bible worship. And his father is reading from the book of Matthew chapter 6. Verse, he reads this script from Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 and says, Lay not up yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust up does destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But then he happens to know that Dylan was Daniel was distracted, just sitting on the floor, thinking about the last photo. And his dad goes, Daniel, are you listening? He says, oh, I'm sorry, Dad, I wasn't paying attention. Please go on. And his dad continues, as I was saying, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does destroy or corrupt, nor where thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, that's where your heart can cross Daniel's thinking, Dad, is that what I've been doing with this basketball goal I wanted? Someone is thinking in his mind that his heart is wrapped in the treasures of the earth. What do you think that treasure is? The basketball hoop. He's still, Daniel is thinking that having the basketball hoop would make him happy. But would it? And so he was thinking about the verse again and again. And well, one day he finally saves enough money. His dad takes him to go buy the hoop. He says, Congratulations, you saved enough to buy the scoop. And Daniel said, Yes, Dad, but. I wanted to give it to the school. They need it more than I do. That's why I shouldn't be thinking about it too much. But rather, I should be thinking about the people I spend it with. Not just the thing, but the goals I enjoy the times with people. This guy says, proud of the You're thinking about what God wants you to do. What you should do for others. And also, 
how do you think that helping others does that for each other? So his dad helps him set up the super summer at the school, and so all his friends have a good time. Now what I want you to learn from this story is all the things, all your toys, all your favorite games, anything you like doing in this world, they're temporary. It's not going to last forever, but what you need to remember is that one day God is going to give you much better things in heaven. You just have to study your Bible, pray to Him every day, follow, and think about what Jesus wants you to do. Amen. 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 Amen.
Thank you, Brother Henry. Yeah. That is hard to connect <laughs> with a message that I'm going to bring. <laughs> but indeed, there will be great rejoicing yeah. in every land when Jesus comes. I hope you hope for that day. I'd like to say good morning and uh, Happy New Year to each one of you, our regular members. I notice we have some visitors. I'm not sure if it is true, but I have four cards that were handed to me this morning. Amen. And it is always my desire and practice and privilege to welcome those of you that are joining us here uh, during the time of worship. Not only here in the church, but also for those of you that are joining us online. Happy New Year. And I hope that you will be blessed as we worship together this morning. Before I start our message today, I have a couple of uh, announcements that I want to bring to your attention so that I won't forget and nobody forget. After the sermon, after our sermon, I would like for you to quickly move from where you sit to a chair with a flower. You see a flower there? Be seated in there. In that way, the other pew will be empty and that the deacons will be able to pass through with the uh, communion uh, service. So, that's one. Number two, at the closing of our service, there will be a deacon standing at the door with a plate to receive your love offering or we call it poor offering. It's not that because you're poor. But because that offering, we take it up four times a year and that has been helping our families during Thanksgiving and also when there is an emergency in the household, that money will be able to come back and help you. So don't overlook that. It's important if you can. So when we finish, the deacon will stand at the door to receive your offering. And that brings me a, a, a very important point. The last few Sabbaths I was away and I was visiting. And during my visit I saw something that was uh, touching to me and then also it was impressive. After the service, every single family, uh, church, church families received a special ba basket. As a, as a Christmas uh, uh, token for all the, the, the families. And I, I remember asking Al that we need to look into that next year, Lord willing, for something for our children during the uh, holiday season. Because not all families uh, are the same. So again, part of that comes from the poor offering and also what you can contribute to our uh, offerings every Sabbath. But before I go on, I want to see if Montreal is here. Montreal is not here. Okay, that person said, I would like to become a member of this church. So I'll pay a visit to that. That's a value. If you want to say something. That's what David said. Wow, that's even Okay. Thank you. How about Gloria Ruiz? Same thing. 
Maria Marcus. No, okay. I believe these were from the, uh, the food uh, uh, distributor. Okay. So that means we only have one. She said that was last week. Last week? Oh, and I just got it. Okay. So anyway, I'll go visit them today and offer them a happy new year. All right. So we have one that is that sister. Um, Is this her first day? No. She's been here before? Oh, okay. So you're not a visitor anymore, sister? No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought that uh, you, this is your first day and I'm glad that you come back. Amen. And, uh, all right. So I hope that uh, the last Sabbath, you have received the treatment that you deserve. And you know what I mean. Last Sabbath, I heard that the, the message about Jesus Christ was preached everywhere in all churches, not only the Seventh-day Adventists, but also all the Sunday churches. The birth of Jesus Christ. Which is, as I said, I like to connect to the, those messages and bring on a reminder to us for the, this Sabbath. The Sabbath school lesson this morning, thank you for the youth, had uh, touched briefly on the life of Jesus Christ. We all learned last Sabbath and all week long that Jesus Christ was a gift that was given to the world as it's written in uh, John 14, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. I quickly had a look at the news just to get an update on where we stand as far as the pandemic. Sadly, it's coming back. The COVID-19 is coming back. And not only coming back, we're not talking about the Omicron and then the uh, uh, Delta, but we're talking about the basic foundation of the pandemic, COVID-19. I was looking at the news and it says that as of yesterday, as of yesterday, America has ringed in 2022 with a COVID surge, strong surge, with a record of 342,768 new patients. I'm not scaring you. But you need to do your part. Amen. The sad thing is, I mean, some of these people, many of them have already received two shots. Some of them received the booster. But they are getting sick again. So my sister called me last night and uh, she said, how are you doing with the COVID? I said, well, how are you doing with the COVID? <laughs> because you're the one that did not want to get a shot. 
and yet you got sick, very sick, almost died. And praise the Lord that he saved her. So I said, hey, never ask a pastor about how she's doing, how he's doing with the COVID. If you look at me, I'm so, so strong. I'm so healthy. I'm so good. Because of God. Is she still? I'll remember that. But, Jesus Christ says this is the new year. And I want to start off the new year with the right bang. The right goal. The right beginning. Amen. See, I heard some of you already make plans for the summer next year, or this year. I'm amazing. You know the COVID is keep going, and you already make plans for a visit. That means you are trusting in the Lord for safety travel throughout this year, right? Yes. Amen. Jesus Christ, the only hope that you and I can have as we begin our walk this year. Amen. In 2021, last year, so many of our loved ones, if not close, have been laid to rest. This year, we are hoping, and we, meaning all of us collectively, we are hoping that by sometime this year, COVID will disappear, the Delta will be gone and the Army Grand is dead and then we can have a free going for the rest of the year. Don't you wish to do that? Amen. Amen. I want to take you to our responsive reading. It is also found in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. And here is, I'm reading it from our uh, responsive reading because it's a different uh, wording in there. It's found in uh, number 730 and paragraph number 3. That's the one that I'm going to focus on. Before we do that, let's pray. Dear Lord and loving kind Heavenly Father, we are grateful and thankful for life. We are grateful and thankful for the strength. We are grateful and thankful for all that you have provided for us during the pandemic. This morning we are thankful and grateful for another Sabbath day to begin a new year. It is our desire, Lord, that it's not just the date that changed, but our lives to be changed. Yeah. That we must be serious about getting ready to travel to heaven when Jesus returns. Yeah. And we are hoping that it will be sooner yeah. than later. Yeah. As we open your word, dear Lord, we ask for your blessing upon it and also your blessing to me and all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In part of our reading, in the responsive, responsive reading, it says, paragraph number three,
That's three. It says, she will give a birth to a son. And you are to give him the name of Jesus. It is a, a, a commandment. Jesus, the angel said, and you are to give him the name of Jesus. No other name. Then there should be a question, why? Why that name? We found the answer in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Isaiah said, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive or give birth for the young kids and bear a son or have a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. It does not say Jesus. It says and shall call Christ. 
the standard of righteousness. I was looking towards this year. I asked my wife, 2022 should be a good year. Amen. You've got to be positive about God and His love. 2022 should be a good year for you. Amen. It's going to be a good year for me. I know that. How do I know that? Because I trusted in the Lord. Because I have faith in Jesus and His promise. You find that in the book of John. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Verse 13, verse 14, verse 18, and verse 27. You ought to remember those. John 14. And we all know that in the chapter of John 14, verse 1 to 3, it says the what? Let Because tomorrow is in Jesus' hands. Amen. If you believe it. Amen. But here is what he said. Verse, four, verse 13. Jesus said, And what is so Oh, 
pound for less. I will come to you. That's another word of promise. I will do it, and not only that, I will come, come to you. That is very comforting, very trustworthy. Then you go to verse 27, the same chapter. He said, peace, I live with you. Are you looking for peace? Have you been looking for peace? This year just started, you should have peace. You should. And the only reason why you should have peace is because Jesus promised it, he lives with you. Listen to it. Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I give unto you, not as the world giveth. What does that mean? People give you things to please you. But not Jesus Christ. Let not your heart be troubled. Saying, he repeated that again. From verse 1 and in verse 7. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. So what are you fearful? 2022 should be the best year in your life. Amen. It should. Based on what the Bible said. Don't be afraid. Sure. We have to be, be careful. Don't be stupid. Don't be foolish. You know what you're supposed to do? Do it! That's what common sense gives you. Have you seen your common sense? It's there. If you want to look at it, look at it. It's there. Common sense is wear a mask when you go somewhere. Amen. That's common sense. Amen. And the reason why you're sick it's because you're not careful. Look at me. Look, bro. I'm so good because God has blessed me and I am very careful. You ask my wife. <laughs> so be careful. But I promise you, the reason why we're celebrating the 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 death of Jesus Christ is to fulfill what he did on the cross. He came to die to save us from our sins. So it is my prayer that this year, no matter what comes your way, no matter what how strong the storm is brewing and heading your way, don't worry about it. Put your wife, your husband before it. Or someone. Let them be your God. Just claim what Jesus said. I will do it for you. I will come to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Thank you, Lord, for promising this to us to have a good year, a good beginning. And we will claim these promises because of your name. So bless us as we begin our journey in 2020 and continue to sustain us and protect us and heal us and bless us, dear Lord. As we now partake in in the communion to commemorate the death on the cross.
We pray for your blessing upon it. Bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. May I have the, the elders and the deacons, deaconesses that are serving uh, meet me out here. But if you can do now move to the, the pew with the seat. Those of you that are sitting on the outside, it's okay. As long as there is an opening where they can walk.
in a Christian ministry. Preparing myself to enter into the chaplaincy program, I had an opportunity this coming Thursday to go and be interviewed by the Methodist chaplaincy program. I need your, your prayer. I solicit your prayer that if this is God's will for me and my family to serve in the ministry through chaplaincy, to enter into the hospital and be there for the patients, so be it. Amen. The calling of God, we should never let go. Amen. And not only that, and now my soul last week, God has given me 70 years of life. Amen. Very few of us here that I need to that. But I am so rejoicing that God sustained me. I was uh, musing when the pastor says, I feel so strong. I'm good. See, that's all because of God's caring for each one of us. Amen. The faith that we have a lot of people out there in the world would like to have that faith. Amen. Stand firm in that faith. Enter into the Lord's court with confidence. 2022, like the pastor was saying, should be the blessings to each one of us. Amen. If you are willing to take that and run with it, Jesus promised he will come each one of us. May God continue to bless us. May God continue to bless him anywhere as we move forward. 2022. May God bless our pastor and his wife and the children as well. Get ready for each other that God will see that Emmanuel will be the beacon in San Antonio for the ministry. Amen. May God bless you.
many people have done this care for us, and we don't know how to say thank you. But they go way past our understanding and like mercy, Lord. Thank you for that. This moment, Lord, as we have finished this year of so troubling, so so struggling in the world, and uh, you be giving this new one, Lord. Amen. We want to, as the lesson says, the last two months and today we start, we want to remember. We want to remember and we want to, to endure the Lord in your name. Amen. Thank you for that what we give us. Yes. We come to you one day, Lord. Amen. That demon that in heaven, what for each one of us, yes. his visitor, his member, his child, his, his young, his young kid, he there, you want him to be there. We are going to ask you, please help us out to be there that, that yeah, yeah. appointment, Lord. We want you to praise Him out of you all in this world. We ask you to thank you again. Let us remember the important thing you for us. Uh, these are uh, people we partake in today, Lord. It was a symbol of what you want us to do. Even those days at the end of the Jesus uh, uh, journey into the world, he closed and lifted the deal of the disciples. Well, the struggle ain't gonna happen. In the same way, Lord, we went on. We symbolize this dinner with the one who has in heaven. Mm -hmm. We ask you to please again, Lord, mm -hmm. keep our hearts placed on you and you alone, Lord. Yeah. Let us our hearts change, our lives, our hearts will be for you every single day, Lord. Looking forward to what you said you come to you. Again, Lord, thank you for the path that you created between heaven and us. Yeah. You know, work you know that. And you would have to be a little be uh, conscious about it. So conscious that we gotta prepare ourselves, but we prepare our family. Let each one is place a uh, uh, he plays the pastor, the family of the pastor, the elders, each one of them. The leader of the church, each single member, Lord, each child. Let them be aware that the time is short. That all these things we're going to see through coming up this world. You know, we know about it. You tell us about it. You have a relation about it. So please let us be relaxed. Let us be comfortable. That is all in your hands. And you got, and you got our, your hands, our health, yeah. what we need in your hand. And yet, Lord, thank you for the blessings, and because that, that will give me there one day in that big dinner. Yeah. Let this people down, and also bless each one of you here. Then we soon pray. Amen. Amen.
This is said once again, say, This is my blood of the new covenant. Let's drink of it.
stay the course. Keep focus and remain faithful. You will not go wrong if you do that. May God bless you. Let's stand and sing our closing hymn. Five twenty six. Five twenty six. Because he is God sent his son, they call him Jesus.
on this earth, but to make sure that we are not from here. We have a home, we have a mansion that has been prepared for us by Jesus. Just because he lives, we can be sure of tomorrow. Amen. He speaks us from his place, but never from your front. Amen. Oh, Father God, take us home. Yes. Our individual dwelling, safe and sound. Bring us together this evening to once again fellowship with you and to listen to some testimony to carry us through to your Lord this month. Thank you, Father. Forgive us of our sins. It's our prayer we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Remind again of our choir members, please. Stand by right here by the piano. We have a meeting. The meeting is like five minutes because she's going to tell us what we're going to do. Uh, we don't want to practice today. Uh, so I meet you over there in the restaurant. The Mexican one.